Hey guys, what's up? It's Iflin here, and welcome to episode 8 of Warframe The Ultimate Beginner's Guides. And in today's video, we're just going to be talking about basically junctions, progressing free series. Really, this is all we're going to be talking about until we make our way up to, I want to say, Saturn. Because whenever we get to Saturn, that's whenever all the good stuff starts happening, because we get access to these special new mods, which are basically just a lot better than the mods that we're going to be getting now. Um, but let's just talk a little bit more about progressing uh, in Mars and Phobos a little bit because we kind of skimmed over it in the last video. So by now, you should have your Phobos Junction completed. You'd have your free Lift Boy Rails opened. You'd have your free Cephalon Fragments basically scanned. And you'd have your 150 enemies defeat it. Make sure to go ahead and complete every single little node apart from this one up here because this is an Arcwing one, which you don't have an Arcwing yet. We're going to be getting that there uh, over here on the Stereos Junction. You see we have to complete the quest, the Arcwing, but this is going to be uh, next video. So I'm going to be doing this here tomorrow live on stream from 10 a.m. UK time up until 2 in the afternoon. So that's whenever you can see me completing the rest of this planet. Um, but moving on back, uh, we have Phobos over here. And Phobos is a super simple planet. Now, there's two things that I want you guys to keep in mind here. So on Mars, you can get the Warframe known as Frost. And on Phobos, you can get the Warframe known as Mag. Similar to way over back at Phoenix, you have a single boss. You kill that boss over and over and over again. And every time you kill the boss, you get a different part uh, or part blueprint. So you would get your Rhino chassis, you get your Rhino Neuroptics, you get your Rhino systems, and so on and so forth. The same thing goes for um, Mars and Phobos. You have your boss down here on War, who is Lich Krill, uh, but right now it shows Ford because that's an invasion. We'll talk a little bit more about that there in a second. Um, but you have Lich Krill, and basically this is a dude that has a hammer, and he has, I want to say, four or five pipes in his back. Basically, what you have to do is this guy is going to be invulnerable until you break all those pipes on his back. And to break his pipes, all you have to do is shoot them. So shoot the pipes on his back. And then once you break one of the pipes, you have to wait for him to basically throw his hammer down at the ground. So you can bait that out by running in front of him, running around him, doing that thing. So basically make him melee the ground and then he's going to freeze himself and then rinse and repeat that process until he has no pipes left. And that's whenever you can shoot him. Now, I recommend bringing the Boltor as a weapon to kill that boss. And from that boss, you're going to get the Frost Warframe. So that means you're going to have to do it over and over and over again. Will be a lengthy process, but trust me, for Frost, it is worth it. Now, if you're a Twitch Prime uh, member, you can actually get Frost Prime right now for free over uh, on Twitch. So if you just go to twitch.tv, uh, make a Amazon Prime account or Twitch Prime account. Click the little crown in the top right hand corner and then hook your Warframe account up. You can get uh, Frost Prime and a Cyandana for free. Um, that is off the day of uploading this, by the way. So make sure to check the description for the date of uploading if you're watching this in the future because that uh, pack may not be available. It's actually ending and I want to say about, is it four free days? I don't really know. So make sure to grab that there if you're watching that on the day that this is released because it's a pretty good exclusive, exclusive offer. So We'll pick that there up or just farm regular frost from here you definitely want it at least for the mastery and then way over here on Phobos we have Iliad which is the assassination of the sergeant now this boss isn't really a boss he's kind of just a normal corpus enemy that can go invisible I really don't even have to explain anything about this guy jump up to him and jump in the air look down at the ground use your melee to knock him down and then just beat the shit out of him he's a super simple boss and there's really nothing to explain. I don't even have to show you gameplay of this guy because it's basically just a normal corpus enemy. There's nothing special about him apart from the fact that he can go invisible, and that's that's really it. So from that point, that should be uh, you know your Mars done, and the rest of the things you have to do for series are or the series junction are pretty straightforward. So you know defeat the sergeant, done and dusted. Defeat Lich Krill, done and dusted. Defeat 300 R Grenier enemies on Mars, done and dusted. And then refine a void relic once uh, at the console in your orbiter. You know, super simple shit. I showed you how to do this stuff with the void relic in yesterday's video. So if we go ahead and we move on the series here, you want to be making sure that you complete every single node. Like I said, like every single blue node that's flashing is worth mastering right for you. And want to go ahead and uh, basically just make sure that you know you have as much mastery as you can. You don't want to be falling behind in any aspect. Um, so. Also, right here, we have the requirements to go on to Jupiter. So we have complete the quest of Arcwing. That'll be in the next video. Uh, defeat Vor and Krill on Exta on Ceres. That'll be also in the next video. And then survive 10 minutes or more at Draco in Ceres. Pretty straightforward. And then defeat a prosecutor on Ceres. 
that's also going to be in the next video because the prosecutor one, it's super buggy because sometimes he can spawn, you can kill him, and then you don't get rewarded for it. So it's just about finding the mission here that is basically the best sort of spawn for the prosecutors, you know. But what I really want to talk about to you guys in today's video is one, your syndicates, two, your junctions, which, you know, what you have to go ahead and do killing the guys at the junctions to get through because they will be starting to get a little bit more difficult now and also invasions but I guess let's take a look at the two junctions that you guys would have to do first so if we go ahead and we move over here to the Phobos junction go ahead and click it jump into it and kill the mag warframe that's going to be here now mag is a very underpowered not underpowered but undervalued warframe you know, she's not necessarily looked for or sought after in the community at the minute. She used to be insane. Like, she used to be one of the best friends in the game. But right now, she's kind of just super poopy. Uh, poopy? Poopy. Super poopy. So, you know, just go ahead, radio blind them, press 4, and then bring out your Exalted Blade. Stab them in the back. Pretty straightforward shit. You know, that's basically just how we're going to be doing every single junction until it gets to the point where we can't one-shot doing that anymore. But trust me, it won't. We'll always be able to one-shot them with that combo. Um, but now we're just going to go ahead and move on to the Steris Junction, which might actually catch a few of you guys out because of the frames actually there, known as Trinity. Now, Trinity is an amazing support frame. She can restore all of her energy up to 100%. She can heal herself up to 100%. She can apply a damage reduction to herself. And then all the damage she takes gets reflected back at you or the enemy she's linked to. She's a deadly frame if used correctly, you know. So let's just go ahead and get back in the game here. Run over. Press your 2. Press your 4. Stab her. Easy peasy. Done and dusted. So that's just a combo you want to keep on doing. And you don't even have to have any, like, weapon mods on at that moment in time of killing her. You know, just your simple 2-4 combo will, will end up killing her. And that's super simplistic right so that's your stuff done now what you'll notice is you'll see like this little emblem on the front of my Excalibur here and that is basically my syndicate sigil now a sigil is just a fancy thing that you can go ahead and you can equip on your warframe for either your syndicates or for cosmetic reasons so you want to go ahead and press regal regalia and then you go to your front or back sigil so let's for this purpose of this video let's go ahead and pick front and then we can turn our frame around and we can choose a sigil to throw on. So if you kill the stalker, you get a stalker sigil. Kill Lich Krill, you get a Lich Krill symbol. Jackal, you know, forward, so on and so forth. You know, killing bosses will get you different sigils. You can also buy a few here. So this is your master rank. This will evolve as you level up. And this is Community Nintendo. It's just like a pulsing one. You can change the color. You can change how these look, things like that there. But the reason that the Steel Meridian one is important, because as you're wearing this, you're going to earn standing towards the syndicate that you're a part of, or whichever one this represents. So in this case, Steel Meridian, which is what I told you guys to cho choose in the last episode if you had already progressed a little bit forward. So... What you'll notice here is you have all these different syndicates, right? And you'll notice that I have Steel Meridian. I've got positive standing with them, meaning the bar's blue. And then I have negative with the parent sequence and the new Luca. And I also have a little bit with Red Veal. So if we go ahead and we click on Steel Meridian for a second, you can see that we have the alignments with them. So the parent sequence is the enemy. The new Luca is opposed. And then the Red Veal is the ally, which means we're going to be earning standing with the Steel Meridian and with the Red Veal as long as we have... The the sigil equipped on one of our frames or all of our frames for that matter so we have to have it equipped on every single one of your frames that you're going to be playing with or else you will not earn uh, the standing and um yeah so as you level this up you're going to lose uh standing with the parent sequence and the new luca but you're going to gain with the red veal pretty simple right and every time you want to progress you want to go ahead and press next title or you know at the beginning it'll say initiation you press initiation you give up what they ask you to give up i believe it's like forty thousand credits or something so you give that there up you get the sigil you equip the sigil you keep on progressing so once we hit 5k standing which you should be able to hit uh, within a day like you should be able to hit your uh, standing capacity or whatever it's called whatever you want to call it in a day's worth of playing right so right now I, I can only earn free fuzz in a day because it's like your mastery level plus you know 1k right so let's say you're match rank 2 you'd have 2000 standing at a day plus 1000 which means you could earn free thousand because i only sort of progressed to mastery rank uh free today so i'll show you the mastery rank free test as well but um, 
jump in a little bit more you can see um you have to sacrifice things so i have to give up two more fix 30,000 credits so on and so forth but you can also see all these different rewards that you will get um for uh leveling up and what we're going to be heading for in this guide is the scatter justice uh, mod right here and this is going to make a weapon that we're going to get at my strength four pretty insane and will probably take you into late game like very very late game so this is a 110% mob worth picking up. Now, obviously, you're going to have to have 25,000 standing saved up, but, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about that there as it comes around. So what you want to be doing is you want to be progressing through this ranks. So you're going to have to get Brave and then get Valiant and then get Defender and then you get up to Protector. So once you hit the Protector rank, you'll be given the choice to choose one of these. You want to be choosing the Scattered Justice Augment because that's going to make the heck really insane and then you see all these different warframe augments and stuff we can talk a little bit more about those later and there's also really cool weapons up here as well so like the vacor marlock and the vacor heck and so on and so forth it's just there's a lot to talk about but i can't possibly cover every single mod in this video and really you just want to be getting the ones that are relevant to the frames that you have at that time so you know for example radiant finish or maybe a uh, chromatic blade right here those are two really good mods for excalibur which we'll be picking up uh, in the future as well um so there's a lot there definitely a lot to take in obviously you can choose whichever syndicate you want but for the sake of this tutorial i'm probably the best option as a newer player is the steel meridian so try not to choose anything else once you max out your steel meridian you will be able to go back and you know sort of get allied with another syndicate so you could choose arbiters of hexus or whatever you lose standing with the red veal but you'd also earn standing with the cephalon suda so you'd have you know arbiters of hexus steel meridian and then uh your cephalon suda so you'd have three of those uh syndicates right there so pretty cool combo right there and that's what we're going to be aiming for on this account at least so um that's really that so make sure you have your sigil equipped and that's really that really that's basically it but you can go ahead and remember to keep on swapping out your weapons and stuff in terms of your mastery and things like that there so let's say you get a weapon to level 30 let's actually see if i have any weapons level 30 here that i could sell so take for example the the lado right i can just go ahead and sell my lado now so if i go ahead pause the game head to equipment go to inventory go to my secondary weapons or my weapons right here press the lado sell it done sell okay that frees up a weapon slot for me so i currently have four weapon slots so i can just go ahead and get more weapons uh which is pretty good especially for your progression your mass rank etc keep in mind you have to have one of every sort of um weapon type so i'm just going to go ahead and sell the mk1 paris as well because i don't need that anymore because i have the boltor so the boltor is a really good weapon highly recommend picking it up it's great versus the grenier faction and then the next weapon you want to be picking up is the karak because the karak is going to be great versus the uh the corpus faction let's see if i can spell it right k-a-r-a-k -A -A -K. there we go and then you want to go ahead purchase that blueprint and then craft that there as well so i'm just going to go ahead and leave that to craft overnight uh for tomorrow's video and then we'll talk about leveling it up uh, in tomorrow's video as well so you also will see that as you progress through all of your different um junctions and stuff you will have more and more weapons and stuff to level up such as the fragger such as the gorgon and it's not a bad idea to go ahead craft those and have them sit and waiting as well as your frame parts as well like you're not necessarily having to go out of your way to you know fully complete the frame you know you don't have to have uh rhino in your inventory you can just have rhino crafted and complete it waiting in your inventory to be claimed at a later date which is what the goal is with this guide to sort of teach you guys to do that's what we're going to be aiming for uh, once we get up to jupiter we can get our neural sensors and once we get a decent amount of plastids we can start sort of doing that you know so um it's all about preparation preparing for the future uh in the game and having stuff which will really make uh future content a lot easier for you so that's another thing we're going to be talking about in today's video with invasion so you may not have noticed this before but as you progress through the planets you'll notice that you get more and more tabs up here and one of them being the little fist and also your alerts but we'll talk a little bit about well we don't really need to talk about alerts because it's just random missions with random awards um but these invasions these are super important especially for whenever we join a clan and we start looking at the clan tech weapons because the clan tech weapons are extremely powerful and extremely useful as an early game player there's a weapon that we're going to be going for called the marlock at master rank 5 and you need a shit ton of detonate injectors so how invasions work is you press it and then you choose one of the little fists here so let's take Kerr for example right we click on that then we press the corpus siege 
and then we get to choose a side and depending on which side we choose will determine which enemies we are allied with and which enemies we're actually fighting against and what reward we're going to get now you also have to notice that you have to do this mission three times uh you don't have to necessarily do it in a row but you just have to complete the mission three times for the faction that you choose to get the reward now if i were to say side with the corpus and then i got one point with the corpus and then i side it with the grenier i would lose the point that i have with the corpus and it would just go to the grenier you know so what I recommend doing, you're going to need a lot more field drawn than you're going to need detonate injector, but make sure to just stock up on all of them. I recommend getting like 10 of each every time you play. So let's say you want to um, focus on getting your detonate injectors. Go ahead, get 10 detonate injectors, then focus on getting 10 field drawn and split it up that way. And that way, you know, you're, you're going to have like a nice stockpile of both of the resources sitting in your pocket, you know. Um, so... The reason that you have to do invasions for these missions and you can't or not these missions these resources is because these resources don't necessarily drop you might get like tinier versions like field drawn sample or detonite uh samples or whatever uh but you can use those to craft these particular resources which you're going to need to craft uh your better weapons so you can just go ahead and do invasions to get them straight up so Definitely make sure that you have your invasions uh, on check and make sure that you're running through those and getting it done uh, just to get these like in your pocket. Like I said, have a nice stockpile of them going forward because there's a lot of clan tech weapons. There is loads and they're super powerful. So there's no reason not to pick up field drawn. There's no reason not to pick up that injector. So, you know, you can have so many of these. And the thing is, you're not going to get these instantly. So whenever you complete the free missions that you need to do, you're not just going to get the detonite injector. What you have to wait for is you see this little percentage thing here. So once the percentage gets to zero, so once one side has been beaten, so let's say, you know, right now the Grenier are at 30.7%. If more people side with the Corpus, their percentage is going to go up. So the Corpus percentage is going to go up and the Grenier percentage is going to go down. And once the Grenier percentage hits zero, that's whenever you will receive an inbox message. So if you pause the game, go to communications inbox, you'll get the detonate injector or the field drawn sample that you chose, right? So the same can be said with um, your infested as well. So you guys remember we were on Mars not that long ago and we seen that we have Ford here. Now Ford is another boss. He drops the Warframe known as Nyx. So if you actually see Ford, you want to go ahead and uh, you want to kill him to get the Warframe known as Nyx. Pretty good crowd control frame. I recommend 10 out of 10. But you don't get to choose. You don't get to side with the infested. You can only side with the Grenier or Corpus going against them. So anytime there's a thing versus the infested, just go ahead and do it. So just make sure to run your invasions, guys. It's super, super beneficial. And there's no reason not to, really, in my opinion, at least. So that is really going to be it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button below. And if you learned something new, you know, you know just tell me in the comment section, stuff like that there. I'm also doing monthly giveaways now, you guys. I'm going to try to mention it at the end of the videos instead of doing it at the start of the videos. Like, oh my god, yay, giveaway, haha, <laughs> XD, lol, I'm out. Um, so I'm doing monthly giveaways. You can look down in the description of every single video that I post and it'll say monthly giveaway. You can go ahead and enter. All you have to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Twitch, and then follow me on Twitter and then play Warframe at Twitter because obviously those are the guys that... Um, you know, let me do the giveaways. It's 500 platinum. It's for all platforms. And the winner will be announced at the end of August via email. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's there for you guys. If you want to sign up for it, there's really no downside to it other than the fact that you have to follow me. I know how hard that can be listening to me all day, but you know, some things you just got to do for some platinum to get the slots and stuff. And don't worry, guys, we'll be covering more platinum uh, trading tips and stuff in the sky whenever it comes around. Right now, we just don't need to get platinum at the minute. And they're trying to make this as streamlined as possible for you guys. So um, anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you liked it, hit like. And if you want to see more Warframe content from me, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.